I am Nepal. I'm an optometrist at Morefields Eye Hospital City Road. I'm the principal optometrist for the Ednexel service. My role is um, working in clinic alongside our consultants and fellows and registrars, um, as well as the other allied health professionals, such as nurses and um, orthoptists. It can be nerve wracking because obviously you think, what is this? What's causing this? But I think the way I've learned to sort of practice is that I always think serious things first and I exclude those things first, whether it be the questions that I ask or the way that I in, um, investigate or examine. And then by default, I'll bring it to more sort of the more common, less scary age-related like reasons for having these problems. We're gonna start by reviewing the upper lid anatomy, function and assessment. What I want us to do is to consider what we see, what we can check, what we can ask, but we want to do it in a really systematic way when we look at these cases, from the eyebrow to the eyelid to the eyeball. And when we look at the eyelid, we're going to look at the anterior lamella and posterior lamella and maybe the middle lamella. Today, I really wanted to focus on the anatomy of the upper lid. Um, and with that, I wanted us to be really methodical in how we assess the upper lid. So sort of starting with the brow, the lid, um, going from the anterior lamella to the posterior lamella, so the front of the eyelid to the back of the eyelid, um, and then being systematic in examining those structures, um, appreciating the anatomy of those structures, um, the function of those structures, and how we examine these structures. And I think once you've got those core skills set, then it helps, it makes um, understanding disease easier and therefore in turn it makes understanding management of these disease easier. To test the function of the skin, so you need to check the three different di divisions of the trigeminal nerve. So I say to the patient, um, in a minute I'm going to touch the face with the, di um, the different parts of the face with this tissue. Let me know when you can feel something, okay? Close your eyes. Perfect. Can you feel that there? Yeah. Brilliant. And that there? Yeah. Perfect. How does that feel between the sides? About the same, more or less? Yeah, I think so. Brilliant. How about that? Yeah. Good. And that? Yeah. How does that feel between the sides? Yeah, that's the same. Perfect. How's that? Yeah. Good. And that? Yeah. Perfect. How does that feel between the sides? It's the same. Brilliant. Well done. Can you stay up here? Don't go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so that's the skin. Uh, again, if we've got time at the end, we'll get everybody to do it. Um, so how would I check the strength of the orbicularis oculi? What would I ask them to do? Fantastic, brilliant. So remember that it's got a voluntary part and an involuntary part. So the involuntary part, I would just be observing how he's blinking, so the rate and completeness. For the voluntary part, I'd say, close your eyes. Perfect, and open, good. And then to test the power, I'd ask him to close really, really tight, 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 tight as you can for me. I'm gonna try open the eyes, but don't let me, okay? And then I'll be trying to sort of open and I can't open it. And then I'll be trying to open and I can't open it. And then I'll say to him, now gently open. Brilliant. And then hopefully you should see the eyeball roll down. So you're looking for the bowel's reflex. Okay, so the bowel's reflex means when you close the eyes, the eyeball should go up as a protective measure. Stay there. Uh, and <laughs> right, so brilliant, perfect. Now for the gray line, in, um, you can you know check on the slit lamp, but again, different complexions. You can get the patient to look down, you can grab the light on your phone, and then you can try and see if you can see a gray line. And again, there'll be some differences with the different sort of um, racial backgrounds, okay? Um, so the tarsal plate, how would I check for, um, to assess the tarsal plate? Any ideas? You okay? Well, you can't pick up the <laughs> questions. Well. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> Anyone? So it provides the rigid... Eyelids. Sorry? The uh, that not quite. That's for the conjunctiva. Anything else? All right. So we're just testing for how lax it is, right? So if I get him to look down, and then I just try and see how much I can lift it. So not bad okay very good so people with certain <laughs> conditions the lid will lax will, will be you know quite away from the eyeball okay and again with that you can test those those um, canthal tendons that we had so looking down for me so you can look at the punctum and see which way and pull laterally to see how much the punctum moves away and you can at the lateral the lateral canthal tendon is a bit harder because you have to be able to appreciate where it's sitting there um, and you can pull medially and see how much the eyelid moves away, so in the opposite direction, okay?